This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to the Condo Insider where you can get all your information on living and owning in the condominium community here in Hawaii. I'm your host Scott Shirley and I'm really pleased to announce who our guest is today. Uh, but first let me point out that this particular guest, uh, both Richard Emery and I saw her speak at the Hawaii um, or at the HCCA seminar and we're very impressed with her program so we decided to invite her to um, participate here at the Condo Insider and I'd like to introduce our guest Cynthia Arnold who is the Vice President of Senior Move Managers LLC <laughs> um, who's going to be discussing with us today the issue of hoarders. Yes, thank you for having me. Oh, it's, I'm glad to have you here. <laughs> We'll find out if I have a problem. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so first, before we get started, um, why don't you tell us a little about what you do in regards to this situation? Okay. So I run a company called Senior Move Managers and Declutter Hawaii. Yeah. We basically help clients to declutter and downsize their stuff. And part of that is with working with hoarders. Most of our clients are seniors. Um, some collect things, some um, have an abundance of things, and those, so those were the hoarders that we have worked with. Well, you, you and I were just discussing before the show started. I was wondering if there was a particular age group. Um, and then I pointed out recently there was an article making the rounds in a number of magazines and such that uh, the millennial generation refuses to inherit mm -hmm. their parents' stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we get. And those would be the grandchildren of our clients. Yes. So they are like, no, I don't want it. I don't want nothing. <laughs> and I, I see it firsthand because the kids, the adult children, don't even want things now. Yeah. So it's not only the millennials, but it's other generations. Uh, well, uh, apparently they didn't like the Brady Bunch decor uh, <laughs> and don't very want to inherit. <laughs> yeah, very different now. So, first off, let's start out with the simplest question, and maybe it's not the simplest, and what is a hoarder? Well, like we were talking about uh, before, a hoarder is a collector, a collector of, but excessive collecting of things. And a lot of times they don't only collect one thing, they collect multiple things. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of people, when I ask them the question, do you know a hoarder? They're like, oh yeah, that's me, or oh yeah, that's my mom, or oh yeah, that's my, my sister. But um, it can be anybody. It can. Yeah. It's, a clinical it's a clinical disease, though. It's called clinically di disorganized individual. Um, a lot of people who are hoarders collect things that what other people would see as useless objects, right? You collect a bunch of tofu containers, right? You collect every single one of them, every A carton, every jack-in-the-box cup. <laughs> that's a little, that's obsessive, right? Yeah. Well, I can point out, um, my late mother used to be in a retirement community in Maui, and after she was done reading magazines and books, they had a community area where you could leave that for other people. Mm -hmm. And at 10 o'clock, she'd leave, you know, three books and a dozen magazines, and at 10.03, they were gone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it turned out that they did have a hoarder in the complex and she would wait for people to drop off their magazines and books and mm -hmm. she'd immediately go grab them up. Mm -hmm. Or even people that, you know, bulky pickup comes, right, and mm -hmm. you drive down, oh, look, that looks great, let me stop off and grab it. <laughs> and one chair becomes two chairs, becomes three yeah. chairs, and becomes a whole two dozen of chairs. Now, you mentioned one uh, comment about the definition of a hoarder, disorganized. Can I qualify for that? <laughs> You've never seen the top of my desk. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, sometimes there's disorganization and then there's, um, hoarding is actually a, a mental disorder. Mm -hmm. um, so you can clinically d get diagnosed with it. So it, uh, how much, how excessive it is, if it's just your desk or is it everywhere else? Well, Are you a collector of everything else? <laughs> you and I had been discussing prior to the show that both myself and Richard Emery had had to deal with hoarders mm -hmm. before um, in condo associations. And it's interesting, you now my situation, the person was hoarding petroleum products, mm -hmm. oil and gas additives, and just stockpiling them in his condo unit. The one Richard had to deal with, it was all newspapers and magazines, mm -hmm. floor to ceiling. Wow. Um, is there any type of hoarding that you see more of than, you know, 
like newspapers, magazines, I, that seems to be the one that I've seen most often. Yes, newspapers, magazine is the, probably the most common that I see here as well. Um, we have also had um, animal okay. um, kind of collection of actual animals and then of course what happens with animals after they use the bathroom. Yeah. Um, not necessarily they're keeping them, but they're just not getting rid of it. Um, and then it just gets excessive where it's everywhere. Um, other things are, you know, how, the, how there's storage units everywhere now, right? Yes. So people collect stuff and then keep it. I had a man who had 4,000 pieces of Pyrex. Pyrex? <laughs> yes. Interesting. Pyrex. <laughs> so, and I thought, wow, and he knew. He knew how many he had. He knew, he just said, I love to collect them. And now he's just trying to get rid of it. Well, I won't tell my wife because she sort of sometimes picks up some of this old Pyrex at <laughs> um, um, Goodwill or something because she likes it. But mm -hmm. I won't That's tell exactly her about that he one. <laughs> he, anywhere he went, he found a Pyrex container, he picked it up. He would order sets of it, so he has a, many, many, many sets. <laughs> Well, so we now understand what a hoarder is, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's just newspaper magazines. It could be just about anything, and like you mentioned, pets. And I'll just let you know that uh, both my wife and I used to foster dogs uh, for a rescue group on the Big Island, but we had to stop because we would foster and then not give them back. Um. So before we got accused of being hoarders, we had to stop. <laughs> we just it. donate to them now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so... Um, we understand what a hoarder is. What type of categories are there for a hoarder? So actually with the CDI, with the chronically disorganized individuals, there's actually a scale one through five. So we're all one. It's not very severe. <laughs> we do collect some things. You know, I must say I collect cups, but now I have to get rid of a cup when I get a cup. Um, but we're all at <laughs> scale one. And obviously yeah. as you get higher, like scale three is you need to go with a face mask already. Oh, that there's an abundance, you know, an abundance of things. Up to five would be a full hazmat suit. There's feces, there's um, food that has been rotten, rotten for a while. So there's a scale from one to five. Um, from everybody is one up to extreme, which is five. Well, a lot of us are probably more familiar with hoarding now than maybe five, six years ago because there's a show on True. about hoarding. Now, I'm sure you've seen that particular show. Mm -hmm. um, is that extreme example or is that a typical example when they have that on? That's usually extreme because it, it's TV. They want to make it very yeah. dramatic. <laughs> and, um, so, But they do have support systems there to help that yeah. person. With the Hoarder Show, because I didn't meet the producers and some of the people, they do want to come to Hawaii. So if there's anybody who wants to be on TV, <laughs> <laughs> they do want to come to Hawaii. But um, it's the extreme cases where if they don't get this done now, they're going to be evicted. They're not going to have a house. They're going to be out homeless. Mm -hmm. um, or it's attracting you know bad things around. So those are the extreme cases. Um, in Hawaii, we've had, had cases where anywhere from one to five, um, and it's not publicized, but we have had cases yeah. like that. Well, now, now that you mentioned that they're looking for somebody, um, I actually have a friend who never throws away the bento containers. Oh, okay. He washes them out, and, put, and the, so he's got a pile of them on the counter, but they're not overrunning his, his unit yet. So. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but literally, he does not throw those away. He washes them out and keeps them, but what he does with them mm. after, I have no idea. Mm. <laughs> so. Well, if he uses it or or uses it. So my grandmother, we do keep some of, she keeps some of those mental yeah. containers, but we have parties there probably once a month. And that's what everyone takes there to go food out, mm -hmm. you know, all the leftovers. Yeah. So in some cases, but if it's excessive, that's when it's probably more than it's needed. Well, sort of like it was a hard adjustment for all of us not to hoard plastic bags anymore when we weren't allowed to get oh, them. Oh yeah, <laughs> but believe me, we've seen them. Oh, I have to keep all of these because they, they said they were going to get rid of them. But what are you using it for? Oh, nothing much, just in case I need it here and there. So, yes. So what, in your opinion, are the common characteristics of a hoarder? Um, so the, what we see is just somebody who says, oh, no, I need that because. Or, oh, no, I'm going to use that because. Oh, I keep that. I'm, I'm just lazy. Or, oh, I can't get it to the trash. Or, no, it's good for this. I mean, we had a client with probably 300 Jack in the Box, McDonald's, paper cups, plastic cups. And it can be used for arts and crafts or yeah, for this yeah. and that. But it's an excessive amount. Because when you use arts and crafts, you don't need 300. 
So a lot of times it's having an excuse to keep it for something, which yeah. they might never use it for that. Do you commonly see this as an issue with, say, a single person as opposed to a couple? Not necessarily. Um, our, our single clients, it's probably because they're widowed mm -hmm. or they were a child of somebody who they passed on. So hoarding actually starts from a loss of something. So like when a couple is married and the husband passes away, the wife is grieving and she and that's how the hoarding starts. We had a few clients that um, a mother had passed away, they took care of the mom and somebody else passed away right after and that's when the hoarding started. So we can kind of look back at what incidents in their life has happened to mm -hmm. start start this process of hoarding. Uh, that's interesting because I sometimes wonder if it's something that will eventually come forth as they get older, or is it something that happened in their life that suddenly they now are starting to hold on to things that you normally wouldn't hold on to? Most times it's from something that happens, but um, if we have, say your mom and dad were collectors, <laughs> and you've grown up with that, so sometimes our clients' children will end up being collectors mm -hmm. as well, or they might do the opposite. They might say, I don't want to be like my parents, so I'm not keeping anything. Now, in your experience with dealing with hoarders, you know, most of what the public is aware of is what they see on TV. Mm -hmm. And it's usually a single person living in a house or a condominium by themselves. Um, but occasionally you'll have where they still have teenage age or uh, children still living at home, also dealing with the fact that their mother is a hoarder. Mm -hmm. And have you had to deal with that as well in your line or? No, not um, families. Um, a lot of times it affects the grandchildren not being able to come over to Grandma and Grandpa's mm -hmm. house and spend some time with them. And that's where we, we see it. Most of our clients are seniors. Yeah. So um, that's where we see it where, oh yeah, my grandkids never come over. I hardly see them. Well, it's sort of like, um, it, it, I can imagine it can be pretty traumatizing um, dealing with somebody who's a hoarder either as an adult child or the grandchildren mm -hmm. and they have to wonder why can't we go see grandma mm -hmm. and they want to keep them away from that scenario that also because of safety mm -hmm. think about a three-year-old walking through all your things and then something falling and then it tumbling all over yeah. so it's really about safety as well now, um, before we go to break, I want to ask you, have you had to deal with situations like both Richard and I have where it's literally from floor to ceiling and there's just paths mm -hmm. cut through? It, that's the scary part is when it's taller than me, I don't know what else is behind it, <laughs> or worried about, if we're worried about going into a home for our safety, it's got to be harder, it's got to be bad for the client. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we're going to continue discussing the issue of hoarding, but we're going to take a quick break first. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. Well, welcome back to the Condo Insider. Um, my guest today is Cynthia Arnold, who is the Vice President of Senior Move Managers, LLC, also doing business as Declutter Hawaii. Um, and we've been talking about the issue of hoarding, and I believe uh, we have a couple of pictures of examples of hoarding that you can pop up there. Actually, it looks like one of those pictures is an after. Yes, that one actually is an after. Um, I wanted to show all that dark black stuff. Yeah. 
That is um, obviously rodent and cockroach um, feces and droppings. And then the picture on the right, that's another house we had that also um, was a hoarder, but had other things living in their kitchens. Other so things. Yes, and, and that's <laughs> one of those things where you have to, be, that's probably about a four. We had to go in with face masks. Oh my. Um, the one on the left had human feces in the house, in the apartment. As well. Yes. So that would be rated a number five, yes. I would take it. Hazmat yes. suits and all. Correct. Oh my, was that the only picture we had or? Oh, no, there's another oh, so one. So those are ones like you asked if I can't see the floor. So both of those, we could not see the floor at all. Um, actually, the one on the left, you were standing on things about a foot high. So you weren't ground. even on the floor. No, we you weren't were even on a the foot floor, up. correct. And then the one on the right, um, again, was, was just piled. So if you can imagine somebody walking through that to get to a bed or to get to where they need to sit every day, if you touch one thing and all just piles down, you can yeah, be... The domino effect, yes, really. You can be buried in it. So those would be good examples of where you're not only concerned about the resident safety, you're concerned about your own safety when you go in. Correct, and those were both condos. So it so, was one yeah. bedroom condos where um, they all both lived alone. Nobody, you know, they were nice to their neighbors, but if so they got buried in there, somebody might not find out, find yeah. them. Well, you know, and I think that's the example most people see when they think of hoarding is the pictures that we just mm -hmm. put up there. But I think you brought up an extremely good point on the one that you had cleaned up and then you see what's left behind. So under all of that stuff could be things like mold, um, pest feces, rat feces. I know we hated to talk about it, but the fact that um, there was one incident, I believe, where you found the bones of... Yeah. of the poor person's cats who Correct. she didn't know what happened to them. Correct, yes. So we, we do come around finding things and then we talk to the families and they go, oh, yeah, she did have a cat. We were wondering, we hoped it ran away uh, and found somewhere else, but yeah, we do find things. Yeah, well, so now you've been notified either by family or maybe the condo association itself that there is a hoarder in the complex um, how do you communicate with that particular person? So a lot of times we come out of no judgment. We're not ju going to judge yep. them. We want to see what's going on. Um, so we usually meet with the client and see what their answers are. So I always ask, oh, what? can you tell me a little bit about what this is? Or can you tell me what these things mean to you? That way we can get a sense of what these attachments are and where they're coming from. And then usually they tell us a story and that's how I find out somebody had passed on or they lost their job or something like that. And I can then realize, okay, it's been about five years, so this is an accumulation of five years. And then how can we help them move forward? And a lot of times you can't tell a hoarder, you, you gotta get rid of all this stuff. Oh, I bet, yeah. They're like, no, why do I need to get rid of it, right? So we always um, come from that it's gonna, it's gonna help somebody else. So if there's a family situation and you want to see, you know, your grandkids, and we use that. Don't, you know, your grandkids want to come over and spend time with their tutu and um, enjoy time with you. Let's clean up so that they can come over and enjoy more time with you. Well, what I've seen and have experienced is a person who's hoarding usually doesn't feel like they have a problem. Correct. Even no. though you can't get in the front door because there's so much stuff, they don't see that as a problem. No, they'll even say, oh, no, come, just push it a little bit like this and you crawl <laughs> under a little. Or you just climb over it here, put your foot there. I mean, they've got, they know where to walk around everywhere. Yeah. So there's, it's not a problem for them. Well, and it's not just the sanitation issue. I'm sure that there's an also a huge increase of health concerns, especially in the fact that you can't even go in without wearing a mask. Correct. Uh, especially in that one picture where it was all the cockroach and mm -hmm. rat feces all over the place, hidden under all that mm -hmm. stuff. And most times, I think, because we've been doing this for so long, when you open the door, I can tell you that there's gonna be something. So we have to make sure our staff yeah. knows, okay, I smell cockroach, I smell rat, I, you know, there's something else in there, so then we have to be prepared. Yeah. But we've also cleaned out a house and the client has been sick for so long and come to find out there is mold all over the place and that's why she was getting so sick. Yeah, so. it's hidden underneath all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times when you're dealing with the hoarder themselves, how did you get notified? Was it family member? Was it a condo association or? 
Vice versa, we in the serious conditions, we are actually getting contacted by lawyers. Oh. Um, because something has happened where they're going to be evicted or um, the family is now going to sell the house, so you have to get it out. Mm -hmm. um, there are times we get calls from the resident managers um, saying, please call this client um, because they need some help. Yeah. We don't want to do anything really drastic yet, but can you go and talk to them? And that's actually solved some problems just by me talking with them and helping them through that. Um, and then we have calls from, from family members. Well, it's interesting the comment you just made after you said, after talking to them. I sometimes wonder if that's part of the issue too. Nobody talks to them. Mm -hmm. Nobody asks them, how are you? Uh, you need any help with anything? And that sort of compounds the problem probably. Yeah. It's because everyone looks at them as, God, something's wrong with you, right? Because <laughs> you're a hoarder. Something's wrong with you. So that's why when we come in, we don't have any labels on them. We just talk with them, see what's going on, and get their story. Because they all have a reason, you know, mm -hmm. oh, uh, I am a hoarder, but this is the reason why. And we just want them to be able to be open up and feel comfortable with the situation. Because most times, those people feel like they have to put a shield up yeah. because they have to defend themselves. Whereas we want them to drop the shield and be able to be open to see what really is the, the problem. I actually think that's probably a good reason for you in particular to come into those situations because I would imagine family members don't know how to approach that situation so the barrier instantly goes up because they feel like they're being attacked by yes. their own family. Yes, like, Mom, why are you keeping all this stuff? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense and you know that just throw it away, it's just trash. So that's, yes. Well, I never said that to my mom, but she did have over 300 salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> but they all fit in one display cabinet, so at least it wasn't scattered all True. over the place. So. True, there are some organized, you know, you know, if you have a bookcase and yeah. you have 100 books in there, it's organized and it's compounded. It's when you have an abundance of it. So. Well, the other issue that comes into play since you mentioned books, I've actually seen this happen a couple of times, particularly if they're from grew up during the depression generation mm -hmm. or shortly thereafter that some of these hoarders were actually hiding money in the books that they had on the bookshelf yep. and so you can't just go in there and start tossing things out you don't know what's in there correct yeah. we found stuff from six thousand sixteen thousand dollars in cash oh my to twenty thousand dollars in gold bars we oh my found money in a couple hundred in books yeah um, we've even had where they cut out the inside and put stuff inside. Um, we found money in curtains, on the bottom of the curtain. So yes, as we go through and help our clients, um, we have to make sure that we're not throwing, literally throwing away money. Well, it reminds me of my late grandfather was part of the um, Depression generation. And although he had his money in the banks and stuff, we still, when we went to clean out his house, and he wasn't a hoarder, uh, would find old coffee cans okay. in different places of the house and we knew immediately <laughs> to check those because and the sad thing is it wasn't dollar bills or anything like that it was pennies and nickels oh. <laughs> huge amounts of pennies and nickels so but you got to watch out for stuff like that they could even have important um, documents yep. that maybe they don't even remember where they they hid them away correct and that's where you have to worry about it um, especially when dementia or other things. Yeah. Happen. So let's, on the limited time we have left, let's talk about how you as the professional can go in and help. So we go in and we assess the situation, like I said, talk with the clients and see what needs to be, um, what needs to be done. Then we talk to all the family members or whoever's involved, whether it's case managers, social workers, daughters, sons in the mainland, wherever. And then we want to come together and help the person, help the client in that situation. Um, from there, we can help them sort through things one-on-one. -on -one. We can help them to dispose of it, to donate it, to sell it, um, and to you know pack it and ship it or move it wherever it needs to be. Well, that's another thing. You've got to go in there and figure out what is, what can be thrown away. Mm -hmm. And then you've got to also determine, well, what can be donated because there's worthy outfits out there that could use those donations. Mm -hmm. But then you also have to realize some of these things may have a value to Correct. them and you've got to figure out how to dispose of them that way as well. Yes, so we always go in and think, um, looking at what can be sold, then donated, then trash. Yeah. Um, obviously, obvious trash um, we can throw out, but 
when it comes to things that, oh, well, this looks rare, especially pe people who collect things, Yes. right? Some of it is worth a lot of money. So we want to make sure that we can get it sold for the client so that they can make some money off of it. Well, it's that old saying, somebody's trash is someone else's True. treasure. So, True. Um, and like you said, you have found situations mm -hmm. where they've hidden things in other things. So mm -hmm. it can be kind of, let's, let me ask this, how long is the process to do all that? It depends on how much there is. So we, <laughs> so some of our bigger clients, uh, we can't go every day and we can't go eight hours. Yeah. We have to work with them slowly. So that could take a month or even two if, if so. Uh, most of them, if, most of them there's a deadline, right? There's a goal, it has to be done by the end of the month or mm -hmm. this and that. So then we have to work with them at a little bit quicker pace. But we always want to make sure that their physical and mental being is what we're, you know, thinking about. Well, I'm sure you've also run into situations where you start getting things cleaned out and then the next time you come back, they've added back in. Mm -hmm. That's why we can't keep the donation box there. <laughs> we have to take it away or else we'll look through it and say, oh, I need that again. Oh, yeah. I need that again. Well, that's actually some of the examples they actually show on that show Hoarders mm -hmm. where they are running behind the people decluttering their life and grabbing things and taking yep. them back in. So yep. that's got to be a difficult job altogether for what you do. Mm -hmm. It is. And it's not necessarily going to be done and then they're never going to have that problem again. Yeah. It's a habit and it's like I said, it's a mental disorder. So they have to overcome that as well. Okay. Well, before we wrap it up here, why don't you again tell us where you're from and how we can get in contact with you. Okay. So I'm from Senior Move Managers and Declutter Hawaii. Um, I can be reached at my number at 808-221-8345. Um, I, we do have a website. Uh, it's www.smmhawaii.com. Okay, great. Because I'm sure there's a lot of them out there that still haven't gotten to the point of seeking help. So I'm sure you'll be in business for a while. <laughs> Thank or you. until you start yeah. hoarding stuff. <laughs> Again, I'd like to thank uh, Cynthia for being here as, as our guest here on the Condo Insider. It's been my pleasure having you here. And be sure to join us next Thursday for more interesting topics on being a condo owner or living in a condo here in Hawaii. Thanks for appearing on Think Tech Hawaii and thanks for watching the Condo Insider.